An aircraft of the BOAC fleet travelling the airways of the world comes home to London Airport. Soon the flight will be a memory. For some, a memory of exacting duties, of the pleasure and problem of people. For others, a memory of care and comfort above the turbulent clouds, of the murmur of giant engines that carried them so easily half across the world. And with the memory, perhaps a question. How does it come about? What makes it possible to cross continents and oceans in a count of hours, to straddle the world in an easy chair? The answer is people and planning. Individual skills, integrity and forethought that add up to the organization of a world airline. The passengers brought together for a few hours in the chance companionship of flight, have gone. The aircraft is taken to rest. One journey is over, but the cycle of passenger flight continues. The work of the airline that spans the world goes on around the clock. Here in Movements Control, the world is at their fingertips. They turn messages picked out of the air by radio or sent along transcontinental cables into a running record of every speedbird on the global air routes. An urgent call comes in from a thousand miles away. Reassurance starts here. A plane is due soon at a point along the route where plasma is available. It will be delivered with the speed that only flight can give. Each light means an aircraft on its way. Each model a speed bird over the world, watched by the monitors in movements control. Behind them in the maintenance hangars are the men who keep the aircraft in condition grooming and checking them between each flight. Routine tests cover every part from the intricate wiring of the engine to the smallest needle quivering its message to the pilot. The mechanism behind the aircraft dials is adjusted to the finest point of accuracy. Science and craftsmanship reach the acme of precision. equipment geared to measurement beyond the compass of the eye. This device, for instance, finds microscopic bumps on a metal surface, enlarging them to look like drawings of a mountain range. of the instrument repair section work to thousandths of an inch. 
In contrast, there's the engineering hall, a quarter mile of it. The aircraft's heaviest components are serviced and tested here, and at Treforest in Wales. In the hands of men like these, the great machines reach maximum efficiency. Precision, power, reliability, and comfort are the measure of an airline. Work goes on through all the hours. The rhythm is unbroken as the changing shifts divide the clock. and workshops, responsibility changes hands. Different hours of duty, different people. Different except in the knowledge of the job in hand. the estimated times of arrival for two flights. The BA272152. There's variety within variety for the duty officer of the day. Responsibility as varied as the people or the cargo passing through the airport. Take cargo, for instance. It may be anything from model gowns to radios, or elephants to angelfish, each taken care of according to its kind. It may be high-born elegance or pampered beauty. Or it may mean life to someone half a world away, like these isotopes carried safely in the speedbird's wing. What makes it possible? Let's look again, this time at experts of another sort. The medical department, whose care is for the health of passengers and personnel, and for their comfort too. Finance, who keep account of millions every year, converting currency of every country into sterling credits. There's the stores department, who can produce most things at a moment's notice. And supplies, who buy the aircraft as well as everything an aircraft or its passengers can need. From propellers to pillow slips and pins. There's security, who guard the precious cargoes. It may be diamonds, documents or gold, until the Speedbird's captain takes them in his charge.
and of course there's transport for the use of passengers and cargo on the ground. There are the planners for tomorrow. They keep in step with a demand that's always growing. glamour to efficiency. Thousands of people on the move, thousands to be looked after by ground traffic staff stationed all over the world. Thousands of tickets to be issued, each one as important to the airline as to the passenger concerned. In the background, reservation staff in touch with colleagues everywhere keep track of people moving between six continents and many countries. Partner and Associated Airlines are the link. Together they form a network of domestic flight connecting with the transcontinental aircraft of the BOAC fleet. Sister aircraft travel the skies, others wait, groomed and ready to take off within the next few hours. Soon they will fan out, north, south, east and west, to destinations far across the world. BOAC, like the world it spans, is made up of all sorts of people doing all kinds of jobs. Here are some who fly, and some who train others for flight. In the lecture room, engines are stripped and laid open for study, so the trainees learn every part of power, until understanding of aircraft is in their blood. technical flying staff in training and for refresher courses, there's the simulator, an exact reproduction of the forward section of an aircraft. Built in a room, it never leaves the ground, yet it reproduces flight exactly, to the sound and the feel of the controls in any weather. On this takeoff, I'd like you to open the throttles yourself to full power with your right hand, and the first officer will hold the stick forward with his right hand, and you'll steer the aircraft down the runway with the steering wheel with your left hand. Right, just before we go, we'll run through this again. Keep your left hand on the nose wheel steering, your right hand on the throttles. Open the throttles smoothly, and when you hear the limiters are on, release the foot brakes and continue opening to full power. Let's try that then. Stand by for takeoff. Now, open the power up smoothly. Height, wind, airspeed, radio range, and the crew's performance are all recorded. Passengers, flying staff are picked for intelligence and personality. Training is meticulous. A mock-up of an aircraft cabin is used to give practical experience. 
Other substitutes can be surprising. Practicing meal service with bottle tops, for instance. Trainees must be dexterous, have long memories, and be interested in other people's comfort. All this must be combined with poise and tact. People vary in their choice of pastime. Passengers may want anything from books to safety pins and razors. So on every flight, a bag is carried, ready mixed to suit the most demanding taste. On visits to the catering department, stewards and stewardesses in training watch the preparation of food soon to be served in the air. They learn about wine and how to serve it. Soon will come the final tests. Many different skills make up the smooth organization of passenger service across the world. Watching others doing work related to their own, trainees learn the care for detail that adds elegance to service in the air. Now fully fledged and really on the job, they are members of a flying team of experts, each one working with self-assurance that springs from interest in the job, backed by long and careful training. bird on a routine flight with all that care can give. One routine flight of many over every quarter of the earth as the speed birds climb the skies. Below, the world unrolls its carpet of mountains, oceans, continents, and countries. In the air, comfort is set to the murmur of the engines, flying in a space of hours from here to there. It may be anywhere. 
New York. San Francisco. Montreal. Tokyo. It may be Australia. Or South Africa in the spring. It is easy to see the world now that flight has conquered time. It is easy to know one's neighbors now that space has shrunk. Flying is no longer an adventure, but a matter of efficiency, of people who know the job, people thinking, working, and being responsible. scientists and technicians give the best in flight today. Tomorrow is theirs. Now.